Hello, I'm Dan Marr from Hamlin Kerrigan. I'm an attorney here in Nashua. I've been practicing in Hamlin Kerrigan for approximately 35 years. 36 years I've been practicing in New Hampshire. One year I worked for the clerk, I clerks, clerked for judges in the New Hampshire Superior Courts, and I've been also licensed and practicing in Massachusetts for 28 years. Today's program, I'm going to be focusing in on what happens when two people are in a long-term romantic relationship living together and one of them dies. What rights does the survivor have? And we're going to talk about that in this program. We first start off with the issue that there is a, there is a common law marriage statute. It's been around since the 18th century, I believe. It's been around for many years. The, the legislature has many opportunities to amend it, and they have not amended it during all these periods of time. And it basically comes down to the marriage, the reality of the matter in both life and death, marriage matters, legal marriage matters. In this common law spouse um, statute, to get common law spouse statute, uh, status, and if you, become a common, if you become a spouse, then you get under the probate rules, you get certain rights as a spouse to elect a spousal share of the estate of the decedent, so it matters to you. You, might, you, you stand like the spouse, and even if they're not, you're not left assets in a will, you still are going to be getting something if the assets aren't already transferred over through maybe joint right uh, joint um, survivorship rights. Um, insurance obviously goes to beneficiaries. Retirement goes to designated beneficiaries. But if there's not something that's clarifying in what happens to the house or what happens to bank accounts that are just lay, le left in the deceased person's name, then those go into the probate estate and as a spouse, you get your share of that. So that's important to find out that. Also for Social Security survivor benefits, the Social Security um, rules state that they look at the, the state's common law spouse statute to deal with that issue to see whether or not you are in fact a spouse. In New Hampshire, to be a common law spouse, you have to be cohabitating for three years, acknowledging each other as husband and wife for three years, and having a reputation in the community as husband and wife for three years. Now that's a very tough standard that, that was established back in the 1800s and the legislature has had many opportunities to amend it, but they haven't. Um, so it's marriage matters, legal marriage matters, and it's very difficult to get common law spouse status. I did have a case a while back up North Country where there was a, the couple had um, children together and they, um, because he had a, a business up there and it was a very conservative community up there, he didn't want people to think that they were, they had children and they were unmarried without um, benefit of marriage while they had kids. So he would tell people that he was married. So they were able to, so when he passed away and the girlfriend put a um, claim in for spousal, um, for common law spouse claim, I was representing the the parents that didn't want the common law spouse, and she was able to show pretty clearly in court. And we had a, a battle on a, a full a full day trial that they had the reputation in the community as husband and wife, and that's very rare because most people are very clear about um, to tell everyone that they're not married because it's not the scarlet letter anymore in 2024 as it was in the 1800s about having living together and and particularly if you have children together. So there's plenty of unmarried couples out there that don't have that. So in this situation, she, we wouldn't even be discussing it if, if he hadn't died because you have to have one of you die in this statute. So you have to live there, cohabitate for three years, have a reputation in the community as husband and wife, acknowledge each other as husband and wife, and one of you have to die. That's all the provisions. So you don't have this common law spouse situation when one of you break up. So in this situation, I was arguing this case, and I, I was successful in it because I went back to the argument of acknowledging each other as husband and wife. While to the community, they were telling people that they were husband and wife because it was good for his business, or it would have been bad for his business for them not to think that way. Among themselves, I was able to show that he um, was accused of beating her, um, abusing her, and cheating on her, and the marriage, you know, the traditional marriage vows of the um, of fidelity and and treating each other with respect matter. The arguments by the other side was 
that while a lot of married couples act that way, and the court, of course, wasn't going to be buying that. So I was successful on dealing with the acknowledgement clause. So they had death, they had reputation, they had the three years, but they didn't have the acknowledgement. It's very tough to make one of these arguments. Sometimes you'll have um, relatives that really acknowledge that uh, they were together so much and they don't want the assets, and it may be easy if you file this um, common law spouse because you don't have a challenge, but if you have a challenge on it, it's very difficult to, to meet that burden. Um, and maybe in the right facts, you do have that three years, the death of one of you, really the reputation out there of people thinking that your husband and wife and the acknowledgement by the two of you while you're treating each other as husband and wife, because that's a rare situation, but you might have that. Absent that, you don't have common law spouse, and it's whatever your deed says, whatever your bank account statements say, uh, that all matters, because otherwise you don't have the spousal share to collect. If you have questions, you can call me at 603-883-5501. So if you're representing the estate or perhaps, or you're representing the, or you're, uh, sorry, you are the estate, um, left, uh, maybe the, the father, son, father, son, um, daughter, mother of the deceased, and you, so you want to find out what the rights are there, or if you're actually the person in the long-term relationship that's the survivor, you can contact me at 603-883-5501. That's Dan Mard, 603-883-5501. Or you can check out our website. It's Nashua Law, all one word, no space, dot com, nashualaw.com. We have a lot of these blogs and other useful information in there. Thank you. Look forward to the opportunity of working with you. The opportunity so arises.